Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author. And today, what have I got? Well, I've got some chai, some authentically spiced Indian tea. It's lovely, actually. It's very nice. What else have I got for you today? Well, thank you, Ashley. I have some incredibly heavy books, notebooks. Why are they incredibly heavy? Well, it says why on the cover. And on the back it says, what you're holding is paper made of stone. Yes, stone. They say 100% recycled stone, no trees, bleaches or acids. It is rebuilt from first principles to do what normal paper can't, as in wear away your nibs. This journal saves trees, water and energy while being waterproof, more sustainable and infinitely smoother to write on, scribble, doodle and draw. Sometimes one journal isn't enough to do the job. This pack includes lined pages for writing and analytical work and blank pages for creativity and brainstorming, all in a nice easy twin pack. Now, I don't know how you would process stone to become usable for writing on. So let's just rip off some covers here and see what the stuff feels like. It certainly is very well um, packaged, I have to admit. Although the sustainability argument sort of goes somewhat when you cover everything in a cling, clinging film of plastic, doesn't it? So let's just open up one of these now. Here is the first of the two notebooks. It has a blank page, and then a lined page, then a lined page, then a lined... So, this one is clearly full of lined pages, and I assume the other one, therefore, is full of blank pages. Well, stone me, I'm right. Let's have a look at these things closer. So just to put in perspective this much better for the planet lark, this is the plastic I've just retrieved from these notebooks. So what do we got here? Well, we have two pocket journals, A6. We have a stone paper notebook, A5. And two cahiers in A5. So here it says, tomorrow is in your hands. This, I'm going to have to put my glasses on, I can't, see, can't read anything. From I'm too old, I'm falling apart. Right, this, the product in your hands has been designed to capture the thoughts, ideas and insights that will serve as tomorrow's inspiration and the tasks and to-dos that will shape today. Because if you don't write your own story, someone else will. Fair enough. Take note today, shape tomorrow. We take a B Corp certified biometric approach to product and system design. I have no idea what that means. Considering the full life cycle of a product and its enduring impact on the ecosystem it lives in, our materials are responsibly sourced, our employees are treated and paid fairly, and leaders work for a greater cause than a profit margin. We take note of what matters today because what matters today is what shapes tomorrow. Well, that's all very nice and sensible. This company is called Cast. K-A-R-S-T. I believe they're Australian. You can find out for yourself by looking up carststonepaper.com. There you go. It's waterproof and tear resistant, recyclable and tree free paper, 60% lower carbon footprint, and friction free writing. Well, that's a lot of big claims. It does feel very nice. Okay, first of all, the appearance, how these things work. These cahiers, they have a slightly sort of silicon or rubbery feel to them. Very nicely produced. I like the fact that it's stitched. I always like stitched um, cahiers. They, they look and feel better to me than uh, bog standard stapled or anything. It just gives you the feel of um, better quality, better value feels very nice. The paper is astonishingly smooth. Just reaching for 
some standard Rhodia. And that feels quite harsh and rough compared to this stone paper. So that's a bit of a surprise. It does feel very nice. Um, front cover, white facing page. Sorry, I'm trying to manhandle all this while I've got a rather overfilled desk. So front cover is a white. The next leaf is plain paper. Quite handy, you can write your name and address and all those sort of things. The rest of the pages are all lined, apart from at the back. Then you've got, at the back, a little card slot, which is quite nice. And this forms a kind of wallet. It's sealed along the bottom and along the right-hand side, so it makes for a convenient storage space. Both of these cahiers have the same sort of design. That's all good. These little pocket journals, I take off that, have the same sort of slightly siliconized rubbery feel, which feels rather lovely actually. This one suffered a bit in manufacturing look. That's interesting. This one hasn't. So let's look at the one that wasn't damaged. They all have this nice K which seems to be a dark golden or bronze type of um, ink and it says cast stone paper on the back. This would have done had it not had this sort of um, line of molten rubber or silicon or whatever. These pocket journals also have the folder flap but no slot for a card which I think is not a great problem because why would you really want to keep a card in them? Again, very, very smooth paper, really quite, well, very impressive feel to it. And then the final one I've got here is a hardback version, exactly the same little comment as the two cahiers had, so take note today, tomorrow is in your hands, etc. This is the A5 has a hard cover, the colour is glacier, glacier as the Americans would say, or glacier as I would say. Um, the layout is 6mm ruled lines, it is 5.8 inch by 8.3, it's got 144 pages, weight is 144 GSM, wow. It has, according to that, a back pocket, right, so same as the cahiers, it's got a slot for a business card or a dress label or something. And then it has a nicely designed bellows type moleskin pocket at the back. It says cast stone paper. It has a slightly roughened feel to it compared to these other two, compared to the cahier and the pocket notebook. So it almost feels as though perhaps they were they had some sort of uh, threads in there as if it was some sort of material, but it's not. It's just this sort of rubberized feel again. Rather nice, it gives you a position for your name and contact details. Six millimeter lined paper, which is nice, very nice. Now I thought it said there was a ribbon as a bookmark but clearly no I misunderstood that so when it said back pocket and ribbon I think what it meant was the ribbon is the closure if I had to have a criticism about this it would be that the ribbon is too slack it feels a bit too loose it's not as tight as I would like it but the paper feels absolutely glorious now, <clears throat> let's see what it's like to write on. Now, what I'm going to do, actually, I won't use one of the big ones. I'll use one of the pocket ones because that, to me, makes a bit more sense. So what I want to do is test how this paper responds to various things. And to test it, I have a Visconti with a steel nib 
which is carefully positioned out of camera shot. I have a pencil, which is a, an S, a black wing. I have some biros. Because I rather suspect that most people using this will not want to use it with a fountain pen. But let's see what it is like. So, I have to admit that feels absolutely fine. It feels smooth. It f seems very forgiving with the pen. It doesn't feel as though it's actually eroding my nib with every letter. That feels really good. You'll be glad to know I just had a quick pause, mainly because I was desperate to blow my nose. I still have the back end of this blasted cold and this blasted cold is quite horrible. That's using a very pleasant Karen Dash ballpoint pen. And it really does feel very, very good. This is a Parker. I'm finding this really rather interesting. I'm going to test a rather more valuable nib now. This one's a gold nib, so let's see what this is like. Whoops. Notes to self, always make sure before you try to demonstrate a pen that you did actually bother to fill it with ink beforehand. You know, this paper is quite extraordinary. It is quite like writing on the smoothest, softest Rhodia or Clairefontaine, but with there's absolutely no toothiness to it. It's perfectly smooth. It's not quite like anything else I've ever written on. It feels sort of like paper, but not quite. It's very peculiar. So what's it like? Because I've got a feeling this is what I'm going to be doing with these little notepads with... Um, with blank pages, and that is, I'm liable to be sketching. So let's just see if we can get a quick sketch. Okay, here we go with a very rough and ready sketch of a dog, because my dog is here behind me and she is being very well behaved for a little dog that hasn't had a walk yet today because things have just gone wrong and time has been eaten into and I've got to get things done. So, quick sketch of a dog. This paper is delightful to draw on. And it does give you the chance of doing some really nice shading. 
that's truly quite astonishing paper. Now, I've been sent some weird and wonderful things in my time. I am very greatly to Ashley for this. Great, greatly? Grateful to Ashley for this. Because I, I have seen these things advertised before, but I've never had a chance to have a play with them. And how do you convert stone into paper? I mean, I assume it involves treating stone dust to a lovely little bath of some kind of plastic or resin or something. I've no idea. But it's really very impressive. And I believe it must be some sort of plastic because I'm now trying to tear these bits and they will not tear. They're not just tear resistant, they are not possible to tear with your bare hands if you're a weak and feeble 60 year old like me. So I was sent these by Ashley, thank you Ashley again, in order that I could have a look because she said that she'd appreciate what I thought of them. Well I was immediately very anti the idea because I thought what sort of impact is it going to have on a decent pen nib? Well, hands up. I think that was a silly fear. These feel absolutely superb. They feel brilliant on my Visconti and the steel nib and the gold nib. They feel perfectly all right with the biros. And they're superb with a pencil. I mean, really, what's not to like? I think that they would work for anyone, really. The nice thing is, when you look at the subsequent pages, there's no ghosting, there's nothing nasty at all. When you look at the page itself, there is absolutely no feathering. I'd like to try it with a sheening ink and see what that works like. But I have to admit that if you like shading, you only have to look at that blue ma from Rora and Klingner to see how good that works. Absolutely superb. So I'm going to be looking forward to trying out the rest of these things. Now, in other news. <coughs> For those of you who are interested, this week I received the paperback of The Moorland Murderers. And what a brilliant book it is too. So do have a look out in your shops or ask them to get in a copy. It was published by Severn House and it's um, written by this brilliant author called Jex. At the meantime, I am just finishing off the edits, the copy edits, in fact, for the next book, which is going to be out in a couple of months. So that's all looking good. And then I'll be cracking on with the next book because there's no spare time right now. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Hope that was interesting. If you've got any questions, put them in the link down the bottom. In the meantime, don't forget you can help support the channel by sending me notebooks, by contacting me, or by sending money through to Patreon and supporting me that way. There's all sorts of different ways. But it also helps if you like this video and subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're notified when the next video comes through. And in the meantime, I'll be back here in a week's time. Isn't that exciting? And for now, I'm just going to go and finish my cup of chai and then get back to this copy edit and see if I can finish that in a hurry because it's got to be back before the end of this week. Hey-ho. Take care, folks. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.